What's up guys, Big D Wiz, old school stereo.com back again with a rare beast of a sound stream amplifier. Let's find out what's the deal about this joker. Here we have a Soundstream MC500, multiple channel is what MC stands for and 500 is the watts. It is rated at 125 watts by four channels, which equals 500 watts. Or you could bridge it to two channels to 250 watts. And let's go over the uh, inputs here. We have uh, remote, ground, and positive 12 volt we have two 30 amp fuses here we have the speaker outputs for channel a we have a variable frequency here which we press this in and it gives us a boost the lse linear subwoofer extension i think is what that is Here's the uh, input connectors for channel A, gold plated. And channel B is sort of the same thing. It's got the uh, beefy speaker terminals there. It also has the LSE, which is adjustable here. So each channel is individually. Now, this boost is not, it's a set boost. So you just get to choose a frequency. Now, most of you who know these Soundstream amps know how you adjust the uh, the inputs and tighten the terminals down as you can see there are three flathead screws here which when you tighten those down will tighten down the terminal and here's the one for the speakers and the ones that are just above the RCA jacks or just behind the RCA jacks these are for the input sensitivity the gain to adjust the gain and as you can see there's the more speaker terminals there and there's the input gains for the channel B. Okay, so I turned the amplifier around so you can see the other side. Not a whole lot, just the um, silk screening here. A couple little chips in the paint, not too bad to be an amplifier from 1989. Speaking of that, um, the MC500s from what I've been told are pretty rare because the first batch of them had extreme paint flaking problems because these were powder coated I believe and most of the other Soundstream amps were anodized and I guess they um, they had a bad batch so they actually recalled a lot of the first batch of the MC 500s and you know they were it was a very expensive amplifier so they didn't sell very many anyway and to find one that's you know in this shape which it has been used but it's still in very good condition is a pretty rare find. Now what I'm going to do now is go grab uh, a couple of the other Soundstream amps and show you how big this joker is. You can't really tell, I know, just by my hand, but I'll show you with another amp how big it is. And here we have a shot of uh, some standard size amplifiers. Here's a Class A 102, which is a, you know, a normal size car amplifier, maybe 12 or 13 inches long, standard size, but <laughs> Check this joker out. I mean, it is just enormous. Not only, you know, the length, I think it's like 19 and a half inches long, so it's not, not as big as some of the other monster amps, but just the thickness of it. I mean, it's just huge. And here's a D100 too, and I mean, it just, it makes this thing just look tiny. You can see the thickness difference there. Just amazing. All right, and here's a bottom shot of the Soundstream MC500. You can see there's a little panel here, which I'm gonna pull off shortly. There's uh, two little openings here, channel A and channel B, for the stereo mono switch. And there's one of the little covers here missing, but it's pretty rare to even find them with one. Most of the time, both of those are missing. But um, let me pull this panel off real quick and we'll see what's underneath. All right, as you can see, we have uh, 30 amp fuses here. And these are set for the 4 ohm mode or 8 ohm bridge mode right now. 
if we wanted to make it the two ohm mode or four ohm bridge we'd have to slide uh, slide those over to the next slot so there's 60 amps of fusing here for that that's what that's all about all right I know you guys are gonna ask and just because old school stereo fans and subscribers are the best I'm gonna take the bottom panel off here and we're gonna see what this joker is all about on the inside let's see them guts all right guys I'm so close I've got all the screws out except for one and this one was rounded off it uses this Torx bit it's actually the same Torx bit as the um, Orion amplifiers but this one is just completely rounded off so I'm gonna work with it for a few minutes and see if I can get it out hopefully I will because I want to show you guys the guts as I'm sure you suspected Big D is not gonna leave you hanging a little Dremel action and we've got a slotted screw now so let's take off that bottom panel and see what it looks like and here we go my friends the beauty guts of the Soundstream MC500 see there on the circuit board looks like the circuit board could stand to be cleaned a little bit and I'm betting these caps need to be replaced these are the fuse holders I guess from the bottom part uh, actually no the fuses come in over here here's the fuses I'm not sure what those are resistors or something anyway there you have it the Soundstream MC500 guts but you haven't seen many of these especially still around very very nice looking amplifier here separate boards and everything looks like we have the the two stereo boards here and it looks like all the power supply is here those toroids are kind of small based on the newer amps that you'll see see much bigger toroids in those and also the caps and they're pretty beefy for each channel 2200 microfarad 50 volt I bet those probably need to be replaced so I might get Aaron at Envision Electronics to work on this for me and get it back to to new but uh, anyway so there's the guts I guess now we could uh, end this on a good note and go ahead and put it on the bench and just test it out and see if it works. Let's do that next. Alright fellas, here we go. Got this choker hooked up and it looks like you could maybe squeeze 8 gauge wire in the uh, terminals there. I used 10 gauge for the power and I just had a 12 gauge for my ground. And uh, test it out all channels, they all work. The only thing I see is the uh, light there for input connector A is not on. The LED light, see how it's on there? Base extension works, although you can't really tell from this little cheapo speaker. I guess you can tell there when I turn that up a little bit where it can actually hear that frequency range. But anyway, I'm going to go look at the manual real quick and see how to bridge it. I can't remember if it's the two outsides or if it's a left plus, right minus. Let me find that out real quick and we'll try bridged. All right, I just checked out the Soundstream manual and it is the two outside, the left plus and right plus, and you have to make sure that you flip the switch on the bottom and do that with it powered down, of course. And I did that, powered it down, and I actually switched um, both. The neat thing about this amp, as old as it is in the late 80s, you could actually use this as a three channel amp so you could have stereo for your front channels and you could bridge mono to your subwoofer which I know you know that's not a big deal these days but back in 1989 that was kinda you know not the main stay for amplifiers some of them did it but not many now let's move it to the uh, channel B So there you have it, Soundstream MC500, raw power, old school, 
no built-in crossovers to color the signal just straight out raw class AB power with two stereo amplifiers and a huge chassis to make a four channel amplifier and a separate power supply section very nice very rare Soundstream MC 500 there you have it folks another old school amplifier review from Big D Wiz, OldSchoolStereo.com. Stay tuned, guys. We'll have more interesting old school gear up soon. This is Big D Wiz. I'm out of here.